months ago, Jim Wheatley went south of the American continent to search for a cave known as Cueva Merti, a cave of the dead. He didn't return. We are recalling this story because today there was a new development in this six-month-old mystery. Today at International Airport, wealthy broker Dan Matthews arrived home from his second trip in search of the young explorer. In this filmed interview, Mr. Matthews tells what he found. This time I was able to trace Jim's travels to the shores of the Caribbean. I also ran across some evidence indicating that this so-called cave of the dead actually exists. I think Jim found that cave, but he's still there, conceivably still alive. I think I can find that cave. At least I intend to try. Well, all we can add to that is we don't want to go along. Do it again. Honey, come and go with me to this sunny West Indies, where the music is so gay, and every day's a holiday, and you jump up and shake and dance your troubles away. Darling, come and go with me, jump up and shake and dance your troubles away. For lost, for lost, the island's calling me, jump up and shake and dance your troubles away. West Indies, native live a life of ease, playing steel band all day long, making up his happy song as he jump up and shake and dance his troubles away. Darling, come and go with me, jump up and shake and dance your troubles away. Oh, lost, oh, lost, the island's calling me, jump up and shake and dance your troubles away. All I hope is I haven't let the challenge of the excitement override my logic. Now, right here by the edge of the sea. Is it all right, Mr. Matthews? You can go, Hayes. Pete, it's good to see you. Never mind. I can come to you. I want to see your husband. He has some men with him right now. Yeah, well, uh, I want to see them, too. About the trip? 
not going to throw me out. Besides, I, I'd like to meet them. You know, walk and all. Pete. Pete, hasn't it been bad enough for you? Don't make it worse. Don't force them to turn you down in public. Don't make it worse for yourself. I want you to listen to this song just as I heard it in the little cafe on the shores of the Caribbean. And afterwards, I want you to hear the meaning of the song, interpreted by an Indian that I brought here for that purpose. An Indian who was raised in the area where legend is located, the Cave of Death. Of course, I may be grasping at straws, but that's why I wanted your opinion. Well, Pete, it's been a long time. Yeah, yeah, how are you, Dan? Listen, uh, you're gonna need some help on this trip of yours, and uh, I'd like to go along. I wish you could. Anyway, I'd like you to meet these men. Dr. Willoughby of the museum, you remember Peter Morgan. Peter Morgan? That's a name all of us used to know. And the traveler and lecturer, Mr. Trainer. We've never met, but I remember Peter Morgan. All of us remember. Well, uh, yeah, thanks very much for the remembrance. Well, <clears throat> come on out in the terrace, all of you. Sit down, Pete. Well, Doctor, Mr. Trainer, find yourself a seat. Now, Sir Lancelot is going to sing us a song. Apparently, a normal Calypso song. But there's something behind the words, if you listen closely enough. All right, Sir Lancelot. It's when the crawling worm dies that a new spirit flies. When the tadpole writhes, you see the big frog arise. You got to suffer to be born again. Man is a little thing, a lying and a cheating thing. When man born of woman gets evil and inhuman, he's got to suffer to be born again. Down, 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 far under the grave, face to face with fate, man learns to be brave. He gets rid of error in the place beyond terror, or he shrivels up and dies, and he's fed to the flies. He's got to suffer to be born again. Down, down, down in the bottomless cave, down, down, down beyond the last grave. If he's got the stuff of fame, if he's worthy of his name, he may get another chance, but he's never more the same. He's got to suffer to be born again. And now the young Indian who's going to interpret the meaning of the song for us, Raoul Coombe. Right up there, Raoul. Come on, tell us what the song means. I think it is better for me, for you, for all of you if I do not. This is what I brought you up here for. I'm sorry. Sorry. You know where that cave is, Raoul? No cave, just a song. Then why won't you take me to your village? What are you afraid of? 
If there's no K, then I can't find it. You know, Mr. Matthews, I believe you're right. It's possible that such a cave does exist. I've never heard that song before, but I, I know something about tribes from that area. I've never associated their idea of a purgatory with an actual cave. Yet most superstitions have some basis, in fact. Doctor, maybe that's why we've never found an altar. We didn't look in a cave. Possible. He's referring to the fact that these natives make, uh, let's say, used to make, human sacrifices to the god of death. We often wondered where their altars were. An altar in a cave. It's possible. You know anything about that, Raoul? Just take me to the village. That's all. I take you. Good. I don't think I'm not concerned about Raoul. It's just that I'm more concerned about Gina's brother. When you start interfering with native superstitions, you better be concerned about yourself. You're not going down there alone, are you? Well, my plans aren't completed yet. Nobody should ever go down the cave alone. Any cave. You need professional help, Dan. You know anybody better qualified? No. Except for one thing. That leg still bothers you quite a bit, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Why? I think you gentlemen should know something. Mr. Morgan's accident was my fault. We were in a cave together, and through my inexperience, we got caught in a slide. Mr. Morgan saved my life, but at considerable cost to himself. You, you didn't have to say that, now, did, did you? We'll talk about it later, Pete. All right. I'll, uh, I'll wait for you in there, okay? Pete. Hmm? You're not being very fair to Dan. He wants to help you. You know that. Yeah? How, by sending me more money so I can send it back to him? Hmm? I know how hard it's been for you to accept help. He wants to be your friend. So do I. Look, Gina, I don't care about... I didn't turn from you, you know. You turned from me. From both of us. All I want is to help find your brother and prove I can still do the work I know best. Dan owes me that. No, no, I'm sorry. Uh, forget that part of it. See, you need me on this trip. You, you both do. You, but you need my experience. I think you're right, Pete. We do need you. Both of us. We want you to come along. Thanks for volunteering. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks, Dan. Fine. Well, I guess that's all the information you can give us, because I guess that's all you'll know till you get there. Now, if you'll just start walking toward the plane, please. Uh -huh. um, turn that thing off first. Cut it, Ted. Mr. Morgan, we'd like to get the story complete, the facts just as they are. You've got enough. Can't use that much film anyway. We can if you don't come back. your village, Raoul? Yes, that is my village. Juanita! 
Juanita. See your friends? Wani, 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 Wani. Come on, Wani. Come on, Wani. Come on, Wani. Wani, Wani. Who recognizes our gear? Then they've seen these things before. Sisaba, Sisaba! Americano, doctor, that way. American doctor. Well, sounds good to me. Let's get over there. What about Raul? I'll get him. Raul? Raul? Welcome. Where, where is he? Hmm? Where's Ralph Coon? Pete, Pete, come back. We better talk to that doctor before we start anything. Fine. Here, why? Oh, we were looking for the doctor. I'm Dr. Ramsey. Oh, uh, the natives can't cook. I like fruit, so I can it myself. Well, Dr. Ramsey, my name's Matthews. This is my wife. How do you do? do? And Mr. Morgan. Doctor? We ran into a little trouble down in the village. We had an Indian with us. His name is Raul Coombe. Raul Coombe? I know him. Well, when we arrived there, he got out of the car and well, just disappeared. We're afraid that something might have happened to him. Can you help us? Lino, look into it. What are you doing here in this tropical backwash? Well, we're looking for a young American named Jim Wheatley. Came down here about six months ago to explore a cave. Nobody came here six months ago. Nobody ever comes here. Well, uh, how long have you been here, Doc? Oh, 15 years. Forever. To explore what? Cave. There's no cave around here. Well, we hear there is. Uh, it's one the natives talk about, uh, Cueva Muerte. Oh, that one. You looking for the Cueva Muerta? Yes. I can show you how to find that. That's their purgatory. 
You go this way. So I came here. Thank you. A research man works where he finds his materials. No, thank you. Materials? Thalophytic plants. Fungi, bacteria, the slime molds. We need them for the development of antibiotics. And here I've been able to overcome an annoying time factor. I found a remarkable fungus that reproduces by binary fission so rapidly under ideal conditions, you can actually see it grow. Well? Raoul Kuhn go. He visit, he go. But why would he just suddenly vanish? Raoul Kuhn was in trouble. I want to know what happened and I want to know why. No trouble. He visit, he go. Nino's a good boy. He wouldn't lie. No Indian would lie to the man with the big magic. I saved them from smallpox. Oh, I merely inoculated them. But I did it with the mumbo-jumbo they like. Since then, I've been treated like a spiritual king. And I like it. Makes my work easier. Uh, doctor, um... Doctor, those names recognize our cave gear. How do you explain that? Your imagination. They're just simple, friendly natives. Unless you stir them up. Isn't it true that these simple, friendly natives make human sacrifices on the altar of their god of death? Yes, they do that. And isn't that altar in a cave? No, it's out in the jungle. But I've made some changes in that ceremony, too. Since I defeated the god of death, I now outrank him. So when I hear the drums start the death ritual, I go claim the victim and send the poor soul away to a safe place. And everybody's happy. Only one I didn't send away. Can't you? I know you're there. Come in. This is Concha, my wife. Hello, Concha. Well, that's a... That's a pretty dress. Will you like? I'll show you, yes? Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it looks better on you. You cripple? Yeah. Can't you cripple once, too? It'd go away. It'd go away? No. He no show now. It no show now. Can't you? Go start dinner. These people are going to stay a few days. I no see it again. Friends, no see it. No like food? Oh, it's uh, just that I'm not very hungry right now. Do you suppose we could have some of Dr. Ramsey's canned fruit? No. 
Oh, I, I don't think the doctor would mind. You want some fruit? Yeah. Well, doctor, what is it? Drums. Thanks very much. I don't know what it is yet. I told you these people can be dangerous if you stir them up. No question. It's my fault. I asked her to get the food. Let me clean it up. Get away from What's the matter? It's, it's, it's nothing. It's spoiled. There's mold all over it. I picked wrong jaw. I canned this food especially for the fungus. I told you I work with all kinds of fungi. Dr. Ramsey! Get back to that village and find out what's going on. You coming? No. Why not? Well, let's just say I don't like to walk. to find that cave. Two hundred. To anybody. To you. Will you show us? lying to Ramsey, or is Ramsey lying to us? You know, for a man who claims he's got so much power, he was pretty scared when he ran out of here. Maybe he uh, doesn't outrank the God of Death any longer, huh? Pete? Hmm? We go now, yes, before he come back? Yeah. That's my dress. Oh, uh, well, I took the liberty of giving it to her in return for a favor. Conch is going to take me to where I can hear the voices, aren't you? Voices? Yeah. How far is it? Not far. Well, you you better stay here. You've probably had enough for one night. Dan, you want to come? You didn't answer, Gina. What voices? Well, voices of the souls in purgatory. <laughs>
this the place? This will, uh, where do the voices come from? Are they really voices? Could they be some other sound? How often you hear them, can't you? Sometimes. You wait, you hear. Maybe minute, maybe hour. Maybe no voices tonight. didn't come from under the ground. What do you think? You mean, can I explain it? No.
Gino. Take it easy. It's all right. We have a caller. I bring your knife. Yeah, so I see. That's Jim's knife. It, it has his initials on it. I, I gave it to him. Knife prove Lino tell truth. About what? I take young man to cave. He lose knife. Well? I take you to cave. Tonight. Now. For $200. Where's the cave? Not far. Must go now. Indian sleep. I have horses outside. No. What about Gina? She's safe here. Indians no come here. No, well, one of them came here. You no come back. Ever. You can't go into the cave at night. Well, it's always night under the ground, so... We've got to go sometime, Gina. This may be our only chance. All right. Must hurry. We're about ready. Just one more thing. Concha, Lino's going to take Mr. Matthews and me to the cave. No, please don't go. Well, we have to go. I was wondering if you would look after Gina, make sure she's all right. Pete, you know it is wrong for you to go there. You are no fool. You know it is wrong. Yeah, maybe. Gina, be all right. Thank you. Back of bushes. It's going to be bad underground. Not raining yet. Go, hurry. You stay here. Stay here. I'll look. All right, bring the gear.
didn't know about their order. Didn't they? Looks like it might be a little rough. No bottom. There's always a bottom. Just depends on how deep it is. Take this. So use the overlocking step.
her side. Yeah, well, we can make it all right. Let me take your rope. Isn't it? Uh, why don't you look down there? I'll go up this way. Still inside? Well, we'll find out. Can be trapped by a flash flood underground. I can only repeat, I don't know where the cave is. Then find Lino. I've looked everywhere. Well, couldn't you? All right. I'll look again. Thank you. Concha, what is it? What do they do? They go crazy. Say angry gods bring storm. No, go out. You can do nothing. And I make promise you stay. Stay here till I tell you to follow. Pete. Uh, 
Now, look, you're in charge. No arguments. A man can't be second all the time. Not when he was second choice with his wife. I want Gina to know that I went in first. Squeeze hole. It leads into a big cavern. Dan went in. There was a flash flood. The whole opening's covered with water. He went in alone? Yeah. He said he wanted to go in first. Listen, I need the diving gear. And I could use some help, Ramsey. I'd be no help. Well, what about some of these Indians? No. No Indian go in that cave. There's one who will, Lino. Lino. He came back. And he'll do what I tell him. He's strong. All right, get him. I'm going with you. No, you're not. Pete. I told you it was bloody. You've been in enough caves to know what that means. I can't stay up here while he's down there. I've got to go with you. What are those? It's diving equipment in gurney cans. They're dragging it through narrow places. Still raining? Stopped, but he can't start again. Is he all right? He's scared, but he does what he's told. Don't you, Lino? Well, why'd you run out on us and take our horses with you? I thought you would be in cave more long. I would have brought horses back in morning. Uh huh. What's in the pack? Food, tools for digging. All right. Go get the horses. Take one of these with you. Ready, Pete? Yeah. Oh, those, uh, those Indians. Think they'll try to stop us? Not now. 
They now stop you going into cave. Uh -huh. Let's go out. Go ahead. in there, but it could be bad. I know. But I'll go through first. You come next. Gina, I want you to come last. Is that clear? I'll take my gear with me. And the torch. If anything happens, don't come after me. Get out of here and get plenty of help before you come back. Lino was to come first. He wouldn't.
There's not much chance of our getting out of here, is there? Not the same way we came in. Maybe Dr. Ramsey will send help. Ramsey sent Lino. This is the cabin where you heard those voices, isn't it? Isn't it? Pete, Pete, what's in here? What's happening in here? Where's Dan and... Dina! same kind of stuff you found on those jars in Ramsey's kitchen. This cave's been filled with it. So you remember Ramsey said he claimed human sacrifices and then sent him away? Well, this is where he sends them to experiment on. Oh, no. Pete. Pete, it's moving. It's alive. Oh, no, wait. Chased you? Well, he couldn't have gotten out the same way we came down here. There's got to be another entrance. Where? Where? The same way that fungus is coming in. Ramsey's house. Look! Gina, that's the way out. What about Ben? I don't know. I, I think his back is broken. It might kill him to move him. We've got to get Ramsey to stop that fungus and then come back for Dan. I, I can't go without Dan. Light all these torches. They'll protect you for a while. Yeah. I'll be back.
shot that stuff or I'll kill you. It spreads like fire. Nothing can stop it, except the simplest thing in the world, fresh air. But you've already stopped it. When you broke that door, you killed it. And it's still growing! It's developed an immunity. Now air won't kill it. But something's got to stop it. What? Nothing. We can't let it out. We've got to seal it in this cave. Otherwise, it'll destroy the world. There's explosives in that tunnel wall. I'll set them off from my lab. Wait a minute. My friends are in there. Get them out first. There's no time. If even a little bit of this stuff gets out, nothing will stop it. Nothing. If you take one more step and try help me, I'll split your skull. Can't you? You know how to set off the explosives in that tunnel? Yes. Hurry. No, you do it. I'm going to stay here, and so's Ramsey. There must be another way out of there. Pete, no! Set it off. Set off that charge! Uh. Go ahead! Any minute now. Stopped, Kelly. No. No, but at least it's sealed in here forever. So are we sealed in here. Dan. Dan! Oh. 
That water may lead into the ocean. I don't know, but it's worth a chance. <laughs> Your boots. Better start unlacing them. Thank <laughs> you. 